All right, we're going to go over how to integrate the uh, putty clipboard to your local computer using only the keyboard. And uh, there's, the way putty normally functions is you have to use the mouse, which is not always uh, useful and kind of annoying, to drag across the selection. And then from there, once it's dragged and you unclick, once you release the mouse, it uh, copies that for you. So that's all right, but we want to be able to use the keyboard only because the mice mice are dumb. No one likes mice. Uh, there isn't technically a way to do this. Putty doesn't support the ability to uh, integrate that layer with just the keyboard because it's accepting all the input from your keyboard and passing it through to the terminal. But what we can do is use a separate function to use the keyboard to make selections and copy it to a file. So I actually already do that using a, uh, a Tmux and a Vim clipboard integration. So we've got, uh, this is a session of Tmux, uh, and then I've got two, term, two uh, panes of Tmux here. So from here, I can very easily copy something into uh, the Tmux clipboard, like this. I'll hit enter, and it's actually running um, this whole function. And the function does nothing more than take the, uh, the visual selection that Vim is creating, copy it to the... Uh, Let's see, redirecting the output to this clipboard file and then copying it to the tmux load buffer command. So once it does that, and I added this, I'll explain what this is shortly. Uh, but once I did that, all you have to do is make the selection, hit enter, and then you can go down and your tmux clipboard, which is here, already drops it in. And if you have a macro or something like that, it's very easy to just run it like that, except you. You don't because it's a little slow. Yeah, there you go. So you can run those commands in the lower pane. It's very quick and it's very easy, and I've been doing that for a long time, uh, just to have like a, a Python session or something, and then real code that I can test live really quickly. So I've already integrated the clipboards, and I've already got anything that's being copied to the system clipboard is being copied to uh, uh, the Tmux clipboard. It's going to this file right here, um, which is home.clipboard. So that's really easy. But once we've got it there, we can use it for other things. So while what we want to do is take that home.clipboard file, the contents of that file, on the remote server, that remote Linux box, and then send it back to this Windows box. And uh, this is obviously not integrated at all. It only takes whatever has been copied over using the, um, using the mouse. And we don't want to use the mouse. So there is a way to do this, and you might have already guessed this if you're uh, if you're an old hacker like me. Um, Netcat. So, Netcat is basically for uh, for any noobs out there. Although it is a pretty dated piece of software, <laughs> I think it's older than I am. Uh, Netcat is just a cat program, a, a cat uh, concatenation program uh, based on network ports. So you can really easily forward data back and forth, you can make tunnels, you can send just bits of data here and receive them over there really easily over the network. Uh, I used it for a lot of hacking at garbage and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's great cruft. Um, but you can use it to create reverse connections, but you can't, you want to connect this local computer to that remote Linux box. And the only way to do that, or the best way I should say to do that, is by using the putty, the built-in putty tunneling. So we're going to make a reverse tunnel, and uh, this is just on your PuTTY settings, or your PuTTY configurations. Change settings, we're going to connection, SSH, tunnels. And in this instance, we've got these checked, because uh, the remote ports are doing the same. They're forwarding back. And uh, okay, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about, when we create a, uh, a remote tunnel is, right now we're creating a, an SSH tunnel from this computer, to my server in the cloud up there somewhere. And it's making a nice tunnel that goes from here to there, and then my output that I send in through here comes right back through it, and I get updates on my PuTTY screen. It PuTTY also has the ability to open remote ports on the other side, and then when something hits that local server, that remote server in the cloud, it'll forward it back to this Windows box. So that's what a remote port forward is, or a remote, a remote tunnel is. And you can manage that by going to this selection here, selecting the source port that you want on the remote side. So the remote side, we I set up port 11311, which means that's when this putty 
connection creates, it's going to open a port on the remote server, on the cloud server, waiting and listening on port 11311. And that is a, that is a completely open port, so make sure you're firewalling, because we're not going to hit it from outside. We don't want anyone else to you know, scan it from outside. We just want to hit it locally, and we want to be able to forward from uh, 11211 or oh, I'm sorry, 127.0.0.1. And we can do that by basically setting your source port to, uh, well, whatever that is, and then your destination can be localhost, and 1234 is just whatever we're using because the destination, so the source port is on the cloud side, and the destination is localhost this computer, this Windows 10 box. So localhost, this computer is going to get hit on port 1234 when the cloud server gets hit on 11311. So when that happens, it'll forward any data that hits that port back to here. So what do we do on this Windows box now that we're waiting or that we're expecting data on this port? Well, we netcat locally using a command prompt that is run as administrator because you are going to be opening a port. You want to, it has to be admin for that. So this is, this is just the command right here, and clip is a tiny tool that is useful in Windows 10. Uh, from a command prompt, you can send stuff to the Windows clipboard, and it's very easy to integrate that way. It, it's, it's brilliant. You had to do so many hacks before, and I'm, I'm so glad that they put this in here. Uh, Microsoft is doing a lot of stuff right, which is just like, yeah, weird. Um, but we're going to be piping the output from a netcat that's listening on port 1234 to the clip command. Now, if we run that as a persistent connection, that's a capital L or a dash K, then it's not going to complete the pipe. Like, there's no STD buff for Windows. So it's not going to complete the pipe until this connection closes, until this process finishes. So we're going to kind of hack at that by using a single line uh, command prompt command that is a, it's a, a never-ending loop. And this is weird, but it does work. So you can turn this into a batch file that makes more sense, but this is just doing a for loop forever. So it's doing, it's up to here, and then it says do, and then it's doing this. So it's gonna do this over and over and over, which is exactly what we want, because we're going to take the, uh, whatever comes through on netcat port, listening on port 1234, and we're gonna pipe it to clip. And once it's piped to clip, the clip command will process it and it'll complete and then it'll start up another netcat command and you'll see this right here doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. so uh, let's see that would be um, echo um, oh here here's my paste um, copy paste 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 so this is my windows clipboard that's what's in there and now echo derp to netcat 127.0.0.0.1 and port 11311. And this is, again, we're netcatting to the local computer. I'm on the cloud server. I'm making a netcat connection to the cloud server itself, the same cloud server on port 11311, and I'm sending it the information derp. And when that goes through, the port tunnel is going to forward it to this local computer on port 1234. So I'm going to hit enter here, and you'll, you can't see me pointing, <laughs> I'm going to hit enter here, and then it'll, just go, it'll come through here, and there it goes, that finished, this completed its process, and then started up again, because it's on a for loop, and when I go back in here and hit paste, ta-da, so we're copying locally, but we really want to integrate this, so we want to make it automatic. So we want kind of a system clipboard, and the reason you can't do that on this, like using XClip or something like that, this doesn't have X installed on it. It's just a headless server somewhere. So this is the uh, this is actually the function for uh, integrating the Tmux and Vim clipboards. I'll link that in the description. It's just a, it's just a little function. It's not you know it's not a, a it's not a Vim script or anything like that. But all it's doing is sending the output to this clipboard file, and all I added here was to uh, to cat the clipboard file to netcat port 127001, and then 11311, and then this ampersand, and you have to... Sorry, my tmux. Uh, all of my tmuxes. Um, so, control Z, yeah. 
So when I send this, and uh, and you'll see this, there's a, there's a slight delay. That pause right there, is it waiting for the end of file? And technically, this uh, is supposed to fix that so that it gets the input and it doesn't wait. It just kills the connection as soon as it's done, but it doesn't do that. And I'm not sure if that's a bug or Netcat's pretty old. I don't know what's up with it, but uh, it doesn't really matter because we're just doing this to run in the background by using this ampersand. And if we do that, then the connection kind of hangs or the, the screen doesn't redraw. So you got to drop a redraw at the end there. So then we can do stuff like this. We've got uh, a, a normal command that we're going to run a script on and it goes quick, it finishes, and it copied to the system clipboard, which means it's over here. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Huh? Huh? Pretty cool. So we can, we're here. We copy it to the, the system clipboard. And down here, down here, I'm clicking. Uh, the Tmux clipboard. That's the Tmux clipboard. And over here, there's our Windows clipboard. And you can see it come across here every time I hit something like this when I copy to the system clipboard. See, it sends it over, and there's that little delay because it, it, it takes a while to, to close, but it doesn't matter because we're, we're using the ampersand to run it in the background. So now you can totally integrate, using PuTTY and Windows, you can totally integrate your Vim uh, clipboard, share the clipboard between Vim, uh, Tmux, and your local Windows box on the or whatever's on the opposite side of your PuTTY connection. Now, if you don't have Windows 10 and it doesn't have the clip command, you can just make a little script that'll run the... Um, That'll, that has access to the local clipboard because all it needs to do is accept the standard. I mean, here it is right here. It just has to accept whatever the standard in is and then move it to the clipboard. So that's easy enough. So you would, you would have to keep this running. It has to run as admin. Remember that. And then uh, that's it, actually. So integrate your clipboards and have an awesome time doing it. Uh, it's just way better. And uh, the faster you can... The more seamlessly you can work, the faster you can work, and the more work you can get done. All right, any questions, link them in the thing. Uh, so uh, bike vomit described.